Hi folks, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Eric Dowsett. I've been studying and practicing energetic clearing, both personal and, and environmental, for well over 30 years now. A lot of the information that's contained in the video is a culmination of those 30 odd years of uh, deepening my understanding of the relationship we have with information information being uh, environmental patterns or emotions from other people. This video is uh, an update of a video I did several years ago entitled Trauma Without Tears. It's designed as a, um, a process that you can use at home. Very often when we're given exercises to help maintain a clear state, and to overcome old conditioned patterning. The, the challenge for most of us is a discipline, a structure that we can work to or work with. And out of that need, and recognizing that you know, I'm only one person and I can't be everywhere all at once, I developed in association with a friend of mine, a psychologist in Holland many years ago, a process that you can do for yourselves. This uh, process does require a little awareness of clearing. So if you're watching this but you're not quite sure how to go about the process itself, then I'd suggest checking out the web shop, uh, clearingwebshop.com and seeing what's available. Most of the classes, if not all nowadays, are online because of the challenges with the uh, various rules and regulations about what we are and are not allowed to do. So online, check it out, see what you can uh, find, and good luck. And so without further ado, I'll explain the, uh, the exercise. It's pretty self-explanatory in, in lots of ways once you get started. Now, there are a few pointers that might help you. We begin with um, a folder or an envelope, a large one, a small one. It can fit in your bag, in your purse, in your wallet, so that you can carry it around and practice this throughout the day. You don't have to be sitting down at home to do it because I'm not uh, going to practice this outside of the house and because it's a lot easier for you to see a large envelope than it is a smaller one. We'll work with that. I have here a, a whole pile of articles and pictures from various magazines that I'm using as a test case, as an example. I have put, and I suggest you do the same, with your own pictures, with your own cuttings, with information uh, that when you look at the picture, it stimulates some sort of a memory within you. And it can be something simple. It doesn't have to be all this traumatic stuff that you're dealing with at the moment. It doesn't have to be anything too personal. But you can see I've got a picture here. I hope you can see that. It's just a, a family of ducks on, a, on water, of course. And now what happens when you see this picture? What is your first response to when you see this picture? Do you notice anything at all? It could be uh, a joy, it could be happiness, it could be ah, uh, it could be uh, if you don't like ducks, of course. Um, it could be all sorts of things. But the first feeling that arises in your awareness is what we're looking for here. So the first feeling you get when you see this, you notice to whatever degree you're able, how, how you can notice, how little you notice, how much, how not much, or whatever. You notice what you notice when the body physiologically changes as a result of seeing this picture. Then you know, you name the feeling as best you can. This is a feeling of happiness. This is a feeling of joy, of sadness, of who are, whatever. And then you put the picture back into the envelope. So what I've got here is a whole bunch of pictures that I've taken from magazines. I would suggest, of course, that you work with your own images 
And if you don't have images of uh, people, you can take uh, words that uh, might remind you of someone. If you haven't got a picture of grandma, and then you can write grandma and her name down on a piece of paper. doesn't have to be a picture. Pictures are, are, are great. No words, just an image to help stimulate a memory or a reaction in you. That's all we're trying to do here. We're not necessarily trying to get to the bottom of some of your deeper issues. This is a practice that we would take a piece of paper out of the envelope, and here we've got a meal, we've got some uh, pasta, ravioli, and what do you think when you see this first off? You pull this out of your folder, and then you look at the picture, you notice how you feel. Now, of course, in order to notice how you feel when you look at the picture, you've got to be in a relatively quiet and relaxed state before you start. If you look at this picture while you're still thinking of something else, then it's going to be very difficult to notice change in the body as a result of looking at the picture. So you look at the picture and you come up with some sort of feeling, some association, some identification with this, and then you put this, after naming that feeling to the best of your ability, you put this back in the folder and you do your best then to walk away from the feeling so you've just explored a feeling in a very safe environment, totally non-threatening, and you've noticed how the body reacts when it's confronted with a, with a picture. And it doesn't have to be um, pictures, you know. I mean, I've written down here on this piece of paper, the boss, um, whatever your boss's name is, assuming you have one. And how does that make you feel when you think of the boss? Then the moment you notice the feeling, you put the paper back in the envelope and walk away from the feeling. Do whatever it takes to distract yourself if you find you're carrying the feelings of the boss around the house with you. Try and let go as quickly as you can. And very often that's achieved by uh, putting your focus, putting your attention elsewhere. So it's a deliberate attempt to put your focus somewhere else. Now, if you keep doing that, um, you can do it once a day, twice, ten times a day, whatever, however often you think about it, however it's convenient. What happens is, after a while, when your body receives stimulation, as in one of these pictures or words, you're learning a different way to deal with that chemical change in the body. So instead of identifying personally with the feelings of Frustration, for example, when you see the pick the word of the boss, instead of identifying with that frustration, you simply say, Oh, this is a feeling of frustration. Put the name of the boss or the photograph back in the folder and walk away and make an effort to put your attention somewhere else. So you no longer feed that feeling, you no longer feed the frustration. And if you do that often enough, the body will learn a different way to deal with frustration. It will just simply acknowledge it, it'll accept it, and it'll let it go. So then your reaction, your, your very spontaneous reaction to the boss when you meet him, instead of being one of frustration, will be one of greater peace within you. This has significant impact upon your health, of course, but it also has positive effect on your environment and those within your environment when you no longer feed the drama. So you put lots of pictures, maybe just one or two, it doesn't really matter, of, of, of things that uh, you think might create a reaction in you. And as I say, it doesn't have to be... I won't show you people on here. It doesn't have to be photographs. It could be just the words Uncle Fred. Now, you see, I've put all of these, even the pictures that I've made, if we can find one that's a bit more obvious, even the pictures of here we have people camping, what does that do for you when you see that? But you can see I put them all on sheets of A4 paper or letter, letter I think it's in the US, US letter if you're over there. 
This is so that I, my body doesn't become familiar or accustomed to the size of the picture I'm pulling out because all of the pictures are different sizes, of course. And if I left them on their, their original size, then pretty soon I would know which one I was pulling out in advance. This time, I just randomly go into my folder and I pull a picture out, look at it, this is of um, a mountain goat or sheep on a hillside. What does that do? How does that make you feel? The moment you see it, the first impression that you notice in the body, it may, may happen very, very quickly. It may take a few minutes to, uh, for your body to realise what's going on. But the moment you realise, the moment you notice physiological or emotional change in your body, that's when you put the picture back in the folder or the envelope and walk away from that feeling. I, I suggest you don't use, um, when you first start this exercise, images or names of people that you're really still attached to in a, in a negative way. Um, for example, if you've got uh, recently problems with an ex-relationship, don't use that person. That's going to just dishearten you. You're going to keep getting the feeling coming up stronger and stronger every time you look at it. Although this has worked quite well with certain issues in the past with in relationship, a client had um, an issue with uh, abandonment, and this was a common theme through many of their relationships. But the most recent one this this young man uh, really upset this woman and what she did, she took his photograph and she put it in the folder and every so often she would take it out, take the photograph out, have a look at it. And at first it was very uncomfortable. There was a really strong emotional charge associated with this picture and with the concept of abandonment. But after two weeks of doing this practice, she was able to take the photograph out, look at it, and have no reaction whatsoever. So she became very neutral about the stimulation that this picture had previously produced. And of course, what that does is it moves you on from an old relationship, and so you can get rid of all of the old frustration and build up a charge, emotional charge, but it also starts to work on your issues of abandonment on a subconscious level. We don't confront abandonment with this exercise. We don't confront any of our major issues uh, because that's all just too hard at the moment. What we're working at is using lots of random pictures, pictures that don't provoke a, a very strong emotional negative reaction in you, just so that the body can start to develop a means by which it can uh, handle the situation differently. And over a period of time, your body will learn not to respond or react in the same extreme way that you have done in the past. Again, I say this is very good for your health, emotional, physical health, uh, but it's also very good for your environment and the people in it. Quite simple, really. All you need to do is find some pieces of paper, write names on them, find photographs, put photographs on them, put them in your folder or your envelope, and whenever you get the opportunity, whenever you think about it, you go to your folder, just take randomly select a picture. Oh yeah, well, I've got lots of pictures. And have a look. This is a workshop I did um, in Belgium many years ago, while we were still allowed to present workshops outside. And what does this series of pictures bring to you? What does the whole idea of this sort of workshop bring? What's the feeling? Notice, this is the feeling of, whatever it may be, and it's, sometimes it's not possible to name the feelings. Don't worry about it. You can give it any name you like. And the fact is that you've got to put that picture back in the folder, put the folder away, and then walk away from that feeling. Do not carry it with you all day. And the less time you can carry it with you, the better. Okay, so I hope uh, this is going to help you get started on a very gentle, simple way of noticing what's going on in your life and how you're 
that you're conditioned to respond or react to various stimuli and how to overcome that negative reaction when you experience them. Again, if um, if this is all a bit sort of mm, that too, too out there for you, then check out the workshops that are available online and um, get some more information there. Of course, if you're stuck anywhere, you really have questions, you can email me and we'll try and sort it out. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in a uh, real life one day, uh, whenever that might be, I'm not sure. But until then, take care, stay healthy, stay happy, breathe and smile as much as you possibly can. And as I tell most people in workshops, try not to believe a word anyone tells you, including me. This is just a practice that you can try for yourself to find out whether it's any good for you or not. And with that, I'll say goodbye and see you in the next video. Thank you.